Okay, everyone, uh, I'm Roger Veer. I was the first person in the entire world to start investing in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency ecosystem. I've been involved uh, almost 10 years now, but I wanna talk to everybody about why this is so important, not just to me personally, but for the entire world, right? So we're gonna talk about uh, the future of money, right? And why this is so important here. And we're gonna start things off here with uh, a great quote from uh, Brian Armstrong. For those that don't know, Brian Armstrong was the founder of Coinbase and uh, CEO of Coinbase one of the most popular ways in the entire world for people to buy cryptocurrencies. So and Brian said, uh, and he, I think he said this back in 2013 or something, it's been a while now, but he says that digital currency may be the most effective way the world has ever seen to increase economic freedom. If this happens, the implications are profound. It could lift many countries out of poverty, improve the lives of billions of people, and accelerate the pace of innovation in the world. Those are some pretty exciting and powerful goals to be working towards. And so we can talk about, well, what exactly is economic freedom, right? Well, economic freedom is a measure of how easy it is for members of a society to participate in the economy. It has a number of factors such as how easy is it to start a business? Well, think about it with a digital currency, boom, you don't need permission from anybody. You can send and receive payments with anyone anywhere in the world instantly, basically for free. And there's nothing that anybody can do to stop you. It doesn't get much easier than that to start a business. So, and then of course, whether property rights are enforced. Well, with your digital currency wallet, uh, nobody can freeze your account, nobody can block your transfer, nobody can mess with your funds in any way whatsoever. That's a really, really big deal. But it's also important to understand the difference between actual cryptocurrency wallet, where you have the custody of the funds yourself, like the Bitcoin.com wallet or a blockchain.com wallet or some of these others, or cryptocurrency accounts in which you're trusting somebody else to hold the funds for you. So examples of cryptocurrency accounts would be depositing money at an exchange uh, or you know, using some other custodian type service. So it's the difference between your wallet in your pocket where you have the money or your money in a bank account with a bank where you're trusting them to give it back to you somewhere later. So with uh, digital currencies, you can have the custody yourself uh, you know, for $1 or a million dollars and there's nothing anybody can do to stop it. Uh, and of course, free trade with people in other nations, right? So uh, even this video is being recorded and sending to you guys in another nation. Well, uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give away $100 worth of Bitcoin cash to people right through this video. So all you have to have is the Bitcoin.com wallet or any other cryptocurrency wallet that's able to scan a Bitcoin cash private key. Uh, and we'll do that at the end of the video. So that's a fantastic example of how digital currencies enable free trade with people in other nations as well. And uh, regulation of labor and business as well. Good luck stopping a math problem, right? Two plus two always equals four, no matter how many laws politicians want to pass. Uh, and so cryptocurrencies are always gonna work no matter how many laws politicians want to pass. And then the stability of the currency, right? Traditionally, governments have had a monopoly on the issuance of currency and they force everybody to use a currency, but we've all learned that monopolies lead to, you know, a bad user experience and, you know, bad prices for the consumers. Well, now we have competition in the world of currencies. People can choose, do I wanna use the dollar? Do I wanna use Bitcoin Cash? Do I wanna use something else? Now we have choices all over the world. So this is a really, really uh, fantastic thing uh, as well. So anyhow, we can see a, a list around the world of countries by the amount of economic freedom they have. Uh, so on the left, we have countries like Hong Kong and Singapore, New Zealand, and Switzerland. And on the right, we have countries with the least amount of economic freedom, uh, countries like North Korea, Venezuela, and Cuba. And so it's very, very clear, even if you don't know a whole lot about, you know, world, world events and that sort of thing, uh, you would rather live in the countries on the left-hand side of that list there than on the right-hand side of that list. Uh, so very, very clear uh, there as well. So anyhow, uh, sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. We can see Hong Kong, one of the countries with the most amount of uh, economic freedom in the world, uh, over the last several decades, went from being this little sleepy port town into a world-class economic powerhouse. I mean, anybody who's been to Hong Kong, the moment you land there, you can just feel the economic energy and the vibrance and the amount of stuff happening there. It's really an incredible town uh, to, to see that that, and uh, you, know, you can see right there from the pictures, the amazing transformation it had over the last few decades. And then you can see Havana, Cuba, one of the cities with the least amount of economic freedom. And over the same time period, it's hardly made any progress at all. Uh, and uh, you know, there it is. You can see right there from the picture or ask anybody that's visited. Uh, I think you'd rather be living in Hong Kong than in, in Havana, Cuba there. And so this is one of the countries with the most amount of economic freedom versus one of the countries with the least amount of economic freedom. And so we can talk about why economic freedom is so important. Well, because economic freedom leads to more, uh, to a higher per capita income, higher life expectancy, higher literacy rates, 
better income for the poorest 10% in society, uh, improved environmental protection, fewer wars and violent conflicts, higher self-reported happiness of citizens with less corruption and bribery. And so, of course, that's the case, right? If you have more economic freedom, there's less things you'd even need to, you know, bribe or, or deal with corrupt politicians for. You're just allowed to do it without even having to ask for permission. I imagine how much better and, and, and just how much faster the rate of economic growth would be and how much better everybody's life on the entire planet would be if everybody was simply just allowed to do anything that's peaceful. If it's peaceful, you're allowed to do it and you're not, you don't even have to ask for, for permission. The world would be a much, much better place. Well, digital currencies help enable that sort of thing. And so here we can see in a chart very, very clearly the income level of the poorest 10% in society, right? So in the dark green there, we have countries with the most economic freedom have substantially more income uh, than the countries with less economic freedom. So it goes from dark green to lighter green to yellow to orange to red. Red is the countries with the least amount of economic freedom. And you can see the poorest 10% in those societies have the least amount of income. And so ask yourself, would you rather be a poor person in a rich country or a poor person in a poor country, right? Of course you'd rather be a poor person in uh, you know, Switzerland or Hong Kong or Singapore or someplace like that than to be a poor person in Cuba or Venezuela or North Korea. So uh, of course, the poorest people in the in the most economically free societies have uh, the, the highest standard of living compared to the poor people in the less uh, economically free countries. And again, we can see that it's not just the poor, it's you know, per income per capita, period. Countries with the most economic freedom have the most income per capita, and you can see a very, very direct correlation there. The most economic freedom means the most income per capita, the least amount of economic freedom means the least uh, income per capita. And it's not just a slight difference, it's a huge difference there, as you can see in the chart. And uh, again here, so adult literacy rates in countries with the most economic freedom, more people know how to read than in countries with less economic freedom. And this is the one that I ponder the most about, you know, cause and effect here. Is it because more people know how to read and then they can, you know, study economics and read the, you know, works of great minds like Milton Friedman or Ludwig von Mises or Adam Smith and realize, oh, free trade and economic freedom makes everybody better off. So they adopt those, those policies. Or is it because the, the country already has more economic freedom, which means they have more economic wealth, which means people have more time to study and do reading and go to school when they're young and not forced into labor force. So this is the one that makes me wonder, is this cause or effect the most? But either way, the correlation is very, very clear. In countries with more economic freedom, people know how to read more, more than in countries with less economic freedom. And again, life expectancy, right? In countries with more economic freedom, people live longer than in countries with less economic freedom. And it's not just a little bit longer, it's nearly two decades longer on average. So uh, life is really, really short. I'm already 41 years old. Uh, you know, 20 years is about half of my life. So people live almost two decades longer on average in countries with more economic freedom than in countries with less economic freedom. Well, uh, that's a pretty good in, uh, indication there that uh, if you want to live longer, uh, make sure you're living in a country with more economic freedom and your odds will be better. Uh, and again, unemployment rates, right? So countries with the most amount of economic freedom have the least amount of uh, unemployment, right? And again, that makes sense. As an employer, if you don't have to jump through a zillion hoops and ask for permission for this and fill out paperwork for that, you can just hire somebody when you need someone. Well, that makes it easier for people to get jobs and to be hired for jobs. So countries with the most amount of economic freedom have the lowest unemployment rates. And in countries with the least amount of economic freedom, you have the highest unemployment rates. Because if you ask for have to ask for permission for this and that and jump through this hoop and that hoop, uh, it's a bigger pain to, to hire somebody. So you're just gonna think, oh, maybe I don't need that new employee after all, right? Or if you're the person looking for work, uh, it's you know difficult because the employer thinks, oh, I have to fill out this form and that form and there's this and that and this you know regulatory body is gonna come and pester me. And they just think, I don't wanna do it. Um, so, and, and we see a real clear example of this too, right? They increase taxes on cigarettes because they want to discourage people from smoking. Well, if you increase the amount of work and money and this and that that it requires to hire a new employee, you're gonna discourage people from hiring new employees as well. And again, infant mortality, right? So, so clear, look at this correlation here. When countries with the most economic freedom, you have the fewest number of babies dying at childbirth. And in countries with the least amount of economic freedom, you have way more babies dying at childbirth. So this is literally a life and death matter. Babies are dying due to a lack of economic freedom, right? So you can see very clearly uh, in the data there, this is a real thing. This isn't just hypothetical. These are real babies uh, that are, you know, the children of real people that uh, are real lives uh, around the world. So if you want to see more people, uh, you know, that have their children survive being born and the mothers survive giving birth as well, uh, countries with more economic freedom enable that. Countries with less economic freedom uh, hinder that. So uh, very, very clear data there as well. 
And again, children in the labor force as well. In countries with the most amount of economic freedom, the, they have more you know, income, the parents have more money, uh, they don't have to go into the labor force from a very young age. So you have less children in the labor force in the most economically free countries and in the countries with the least amount of economic freedom because they're so poor due to a lack of economic freedom, the kids have to go into the labor force from a very, very young age. So if you don't wanna see a whole bunch of kids having to go to work from a very, very young age, you should support more economic freedom for everybody uh, and oppose child labor laws as well though uh, because those go against uh, economic freedom. So anyhow, Correlation does not prove causation, but we see example after example in both theory and in practice of greater economic freedom leading to better results for rich and poor alike, young and old alike, black and white alike, like everybody everywhere on the planet. If you have more economic freedom, your life's gonna be better off. Uh, we can make some really, really strong inferences here. And so that brings me to Bitcoin Cash's impact on economic freedom, right? Uh, and I used to be, you know, for, the better part of a decade, a big giant Bitcoin supporter, but the Bitcoin project uh, is no longer trying to be peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. It's trying to be some settlement layer for something else that doesn't really bring more economic freedom to the world. So I, I wish the Bitcoin project good luck, but it isn't this amazing tool to bring more economic freedom to the entire world and make everybody better off. Bitcoin Cash is that amazing tool to bring more economic freedom to the world because Bitcoin Cash makes it easier to start a business. It enforces your property rights. You can send and receive the payments with anyone, anywhere in the world, anywhere instantly, basically for free and nobody can stop it. So of course that promotes free trade. It enables freedom of contract and it enables people to opt out of corrupt systems. So this is really, really fantastic stuff that's possible on Bitcoin Cash today that uh, is no longer possible on Bitcoin. It doesn't really help people achieve these things anymore. And that's why I've lost most of my passion and excitement and interest in Bitcoin, because from my point of view, Bitcoin Cash is the same version of Bitcoin that I got excited about uh, almost a decade ago, because it enables all of these things that uh, allow more economic freedom around the world. Uh, Bitcoin, they're trying to be a settlement layer for, for banks and large transactions. That doesn't help people in, in countries with la a lack of economic freedom. So anyhow, Brian Armstrong talked about digital currencies. It says uh, it will serve as a giant economic stimulus package for the world, accelerate innovation, reduce wars, make the poorest 10% better off, overthrow corrupt governments, and raise happiness. What a fantastic group of uh, things to strive for there. So Brian's right on target. Uh, and in fact, this whole presentation is based off of a blog post that was written by Brian Armstrong. So full credit to Brian for uh, putting all this together. Uh, fantastic job, and I'm uh, proud to be sharing the same vision and goal with, uh, with, with Brian on this. And again, I say that Bitcoin Cash and digital currencies that can actually work as currencies for payments from everything from you know, coffee to houses are the best tools the world has ever seen to accomplish these goals. So I'm a fan of anything that works as a tool to bring more economic freedom to the world. And the reason I'm such a big Bitcoin Cash supporter today is I think it's the best tool that we have in the world to bring more economic freedom to the world. Uh, and so that's why I'm inviting all of you to get started and tell your friends and get started with Bitcoin Cash today. It is so easy. And on the very next screen, I'm gonna give away $100 worth of Bitcoin Cash, $5 uh, to 20 different people, right? So all you need is the Bitcoin.com wallet uh, or any other wallet that can scan a private key. And you'll hit the settings button then tap sweet paper wallet and you'll be ready. So right here, here you go. Uh, each one can only be scanned once. These are real private keys. Uh, right now, the fees on Bitcoin are too high to do this. So uh, right now, uh, the fees are a couple of dollars on Bitcoin. If you were to scan the $5 code, it would take a couple of dollars to send it to your wallet. And then when you go to send it, it would take up another couple of dollars and the person that received it wouldn't be able to spend the leftover money at all because the fees would be more than the money that they received. So this is another example of how Bitcoin Cash enables more economic freedom around the world. So you can grab your phone and scan this right on the screen. The first person that scans each one gets the money uh, right there. And the fee for each one is like about a 20th of a penny. So basically free. And that's how this enables more economic freedom uh, for the entire world. So there you go. Uh, I'm Roger Veer. I was the first person in the entire world to start investing in this ecosystem. And uh, those are some of the companies that I've invested in. And I'm looking to invest in more uh, that enable more economic freedom for the world. So if you have an idea on how to uh, bring more economic freedom to the world, feel free to email me at roger at bitcoin.com. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you all. So thank you all so much. Please tell a friend and uh, help spread this message of why it's so important to bring more economic freedom to the world and how Bitcoin Cash is such an amazing tool to do that and digital currencies in general. I'm a fan of absolutely anything that works. So thank you all so very much.